Well, good morning, boys and girls. I am so excited to see you today. Thank you for joining me for Storytime with Pastor Clint again this week. I'm excited. Number one, I get to read to you guys and get to see you via the video and read along with you. But second of all, it is a bright and wonderful sunshiny day. And at my house, we're going to go out and take a walk. We're going to run around. We'll probably ride our bikes some, maybe shoot some basketball because it's such a bright and warm and wonderful day. I hope you get outside too because today is a special day to be able to get outside. It's going to be wonderful. I've got three books for us this morning. Number one, If You Give a Pig a Pancake. If You Give a Pig a Pancake by Laura Numeroff and illustrated by Felicia Bond. And so we look forward to reading that one together. It's kind of a silly book, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, the second, my son Joshua really requ uh, requested, and that is Ezra Jack Keats's book, The Snowy Day. The Snowy Day. And then the last book I want to read is my absolute favorite of the three, If I Built a Car by Chris Van Dussen. Chris Van Dussen and If I Built a Car. So let's get started and uh, thank you for joining me. We'll get started with If You Give a Pig a Pancake by Laura Numeroff and illustrated by Felicia Bond. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. If you give her some of your favorite maple syrup, she'll probably get all sticky. So she'll want to take a bath. She'll ask you for some bubbles. And when you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. And you'll have to find her your favorite rubber duck. The duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. And she might feel homesick and want to visit her family. She'll want you to come in too. And she'll look through your closet for a suitcase. Then she'll look under your bed. And when she's under your bed, she'll find all your old tap shoes. She'll try them on. She'll probably need something special to wear them with. When she's all dressed, she'll ask you for some music. Well, you'll play her the very best piano piece and she'll start dancing. Then she'll want to take you, take you to take her picture. So you'll have to get your camera. When she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. Then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her some envelopes and stamps and take her to the mailbox. And on the way to the mailbox, she'll see the tree in your backyard and she'll want to build a tree house. So you'll have to get her some wood, a hammer, and some nails. When the tree house is finished, she'll want to decorate it. She'll ask for wallpaper and glue. When she hangs all the white wallpaper, she'll get sticky again. And feeling sticky will remind her of your favorite maple syrup. And she'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if she asks you for some syrup, she'll want a pancake to go with it. Isn't that a great book? It's a silly book. Can you imagine having a pig at your breakfast table? Eating a pancake would be kind of messy, wouldn't it? But that's a great book by Laura Numeroff, illustrated by Felicia Bond, If You Give a Pig a Pancake. The second book I want to read today is Snowy Day, The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. And I said earlier, my son Joshua requested me to read this book. It's one of his favorites. The Snowy Day, Ezra Jack Keats. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. 
The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. And he walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. Then he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking the snow-covered tree. I think I know what's going to happen. Down fell all the snow, plop, on the top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman, and he made angels too. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. That's fun, isn't it? Slide down the snow. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another and he packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. Bet you can't guess what's going to happen, can you? He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and he thought and he thought about them all. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very, very sad. While he slept, he dreamed the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere, and new snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, And they went out together in the deep, deep snow. That's the snowy day. I love that book. Joshua, thanks for recommending it and requesting it. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. And the final book I want to read to you today is If I Built a Car by Chris Van Dussen. Chris Van Dussen, If I Built a Car. This is my favorite one I'm going to read today. You get to use your imagination. I know you like to use your imagination as well. Figure out what kind of car you would build. So I want you to think about that as I read this book. What kind of car would you build? Jack, from the back seat, said to his dad, This car is okay. This car is not bad. But it's just a car. Nothing great, nothing grand. It's nothing at all like the car I have planned. I'll work through the night to create a design, constantly analyze, tweak, and refine. I'll study the jet rockets and look at old planes, contemplate buses and zeppelins and trains. To make it as smooth and as sleek as an eel, I'll borrow ideas from the Wiener Mobile. So sit back, relax, stay right where you are. It's time to reveal my spectacular car. You'll see that I've added a lot of neat things. Flush fender skirts and retractable wings. Three headlights up front, four taillights in back, plus two giant fins like our old Cadillac. My brand new design will be curvy and round with special jet engines that don't make a sound. I'll paint it bright colors with accents of chrome and top it all off with a plexiglass dome. I'll build a safe car just as safe as I can because safety is job number one in my plan. It may look like steel from afar you can't tell, but it's actually made of a polymer gel. A space age concoction that I just invented, so in a collision my car won't get dented. It simply absorbs what we can't we happen to hit, and folks would be fine in the seats where they sit. Come with me now and I'll show you inside. I'll put in a, I've put a in a couch, it's comfy and wide. Plus a fireplace, a fish tank, and here's something cool. The floor can slide open and look, there's a pool. That's a crazy car. 
be a fun car to ride in, wouldn't it? Now step right this way to the back of the car and note the red button marked, marked instant snack bar. Say you were hungry and wanted a treat, just press it and instantly good things to eat appear in a flash. Anything that you please, from hazelnut pudding to aerosol cheese. After you've eaten, you might like a nap, and Robert the robot makes napping a snap. I've built him right into the back of the chair. He's out of the way. You won't know that he's there. But when you get sleepy and rise from your seat, the chair spins round around without missing a beat. Robert the robot will take the controls, and he's guaranteed not to hit any telephone poles. I see you're impressed with all that's inside, so start up the motor. Let's go for a ride. A car that smells good? Now that's something new. But if I built a car, that's just what I'd do. Inside the engine, I'll add a machine to capture the odor of burnt gasoline and change it to something more pleasing to noses like blueberry muffins or fresh-picked roses. Now that we're cruising, let's head to the lake. There's no need to panic or slam on the brake. My car can do something that very few can. The fenders will float like a catamaran. We're skimming the waves and we're having a ball. But wait, hold your horses, cause that isn't all. Boating is fine till we get the urge to dive underwater. Then just hit submerge. Robert will drive as we burble about. We can see catfish and we can see trout. We might even spy the shy stickleback gar from inside our fabulous waterproof car. Last but not least, the best feature of all comes down to a button that's shiny and small. Push it and then, in the wink of an eye, the car will take off and will be up in the sky. We'll fly over land, we'll fly overseas to Alaska, Nebraska, Bermuda, and Belize. Or take a vacation when things start to freeze and fly us all down to the Florida 